Hello, uh, my name is Fred Coe. I'm the director of sales for Graphical Networks. Thank you so much for your time today uh, to view our webinar. I'll stop my video, but so I want to say hello and uh, thank you again so much for your time and interest uh, with our webinar in regards to automated network documentation. So uh, there are a couple of things before we get started. Uh, there is a chat button that you can uh, chat with us. I'll get back to the chat. There's also a QA button as well. So feel free to ask any questions. Uh, we have uh, 30 minutes for today's webinar. And I will uh, get through uh, any questions you may have towards the end. All right, so uh, let's go to get started. Uh, I did ask a couple of questions uh, in the webinar chat already. So if you want to take a look at that. And I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to start off with a couple of PowerPoint slides. So reliable IT documentation and maps on autopilot. Uh, so again, the uh, message is a 30 minute webinar. I'm going to just do a high level quick overview. I believe we have two polling questions that I will ask you uh, to participate. I'll go through a, a very high level, very fast, quick net train demo. If you need to see a more full in-depth demo, you can always contact us at the end. Uh, I'll have my email address or you can contact our sales department. Uh, go through any questions and answers. So let's kind of get started. So, so what is automated network mapping? So many of our customers, many organizations that uh, come to NetTrain are looking for a better way to really find a, a better way to document their networks. Uh, they're, they currently rely on Visio spreadsheets, uh, Visio diagrams, spreadsheets. Uh, there's really no way of finding information quickly about the network uh, that's up to date or real time. Uh, maybe you're new to your your job as a network admin, and you have no idea what's on the network. What's a, what's a good way to try and find out what's on the network, and how uh, easy can they produce a network map? So that's what really this webinar focuses on: on how easy is it for you to go out, find a tool like NetTerrain uh, to run a a network discovery and see your network network in the map more or less. So again, uh, with the automated network mapping, you really save the time it takes to find information and to also, instead of manually drawing out your network using a Visio diagram or writing everything down in a spreadsheet, uh, you can keep everything all contained in one program, one tool uh, that again will discover your network, show your all your network assets, uh, the ability for you to add on, uh, such as costs, warranty expiration, maintenance coverage, dates, uh, cost. Uh, so you can put all those different items in a tool like NetTrain. So not only you focus on network monitoring, network discovery, but you can really, really use as a network asset inventory as well. So uh, this slide talks about SNMP. Uh, that is primarily the uh, protocol we use to go out and discover your network. So if you have any uh, devices that are not SNMP enabled, or you have a lot of firewall rules that will prevent SNMP uh, to go out to your network and discover it, uh, then maybe an automated <laughs> network tool is not the right fit. Uh, so I've actually seen that a lot where customers uh, can't um, get access to the network using SNMP uh, through, through a lot of different firewall rules. So make sure you can talk to your uh, network or security admin, see if you can uh, loosen it up while, we, while you run the, the network discovery. So anyway, sorry, I got off sidetrack there. But again, the SNMP is the primary engine that we use to discover your network, again, check with your security admin, make sure uh, that you're allowed to run SMP network discovery on your network. 
check the fireball rule settings, and uh, you should be good to go. I'm going to launch the first polling questions. Let's see, launch. All right, so I like to get just a general feel of how everyone in attendance today uh, currently documents their networks. Um, do you currently use the automatic discovery tool like SolarWinds? Uh, do you have a service now uh, that uses their discovery agents? Uh, do you currently put everything all <laughs> And uh, spreadsheets, busy diagrams. So I'll let this uh, go through another 30 seconds to get this, uh, then I'll launch the next polling question. All right, I'll, I'll get this stop. And let's get to tie, well, almost a tie. I'll, I'll launch the results. It looks like uh, a lot of you guys there are the Hulk. Uh, your documentation is currently messy and chaotic. Uh, some of you guys don't even have network documentation, which uh, we've seen a lot. And it looks like one of you guys uh, currently use a network discovery. And uh, Superman, Superman, I'm curious, are you guys using uh, spreadsheets that... Uh, I've seen some really good spreadsheets that are updated through a change management process, uh, which is great. All right, I think I'll get through the next polling question. IT infrastructure headaches. So which of these uh, headaches keeps you up at night? Network troubleshooting issues, struggling to find information fast and quickly, uh, trying to untangle the spaghetti of cables inside your network rooms, data center rooms, uh, fire plant chaos and tracking. Uh, that's that's something we're not going to talk about today, but that's uh, something that we also offer in that train as our outside plant tool. Uh, to document the fiber inside the buildings, the outside as well. And lastly, uh, managing the data center capacity. Again, that's something that we won't talk about today, but uh, NetTrain does off also offer a data center infrastructure management tool, DCIM. Uh, so NetTrain does both DCIM, outside plants, and what we're going to focus on today, which is our network discovery. So it's basically uh, three tools in one. All right, end the poll. And I'll share your results. So it looks like uh, the majority of people here uh, are looking to have a better way to find and get fast and accurate network uh, diagrams and information. So that is what we will focus on as well. Uh, if we have some time, I could touch upon a little bit about the fiber plant and data center capacity as well, since it seems like there's not any of you that may be interested in that. So, it's that share the results? Is that share? No, that share is right. Okay. So, I'll stop sharing. And I'm going to go through net terrain. So NetTrain uh, is a web-based solution. Uh, it's either cloud-based or you can install it on-prem. Uh, if it's on-prem, it is a Windows application. So you'll need to install Windows Server or Windows Desktop. The database is a Microsoft SQL database server license that's required. Um, or you can do a SQL Server Express. So in order to obtain these, like these type of network diagrams, so this is uh, this is actually our lab uh, in our office. So this network map was produced through our NetTrain collector, uh, which I will show you in a minute. Uh, so with NetTrain, if you zoom in here, uh, this is a Cisco router. Um, it was able to discover 
the IP, IP address, uh, sys description, and this is all done through a network discovery. If you double click on the actual device, it takes you down to the actual port connections. And this is where you actually see, if you're interested, uh, layer two discovery. Uh, so you support CDP, uh, LDP, and routing tables uh, as our layer two. So these little diagrams you see here, these uh, other devices with a yellow triangle, uh, that's a reference node, meaning that uh, these devices are living off another diagram. So again, the port two information, I'll show you from and to device, port numbers, MAC address, and IP address. If I click on this actual other device, it'll take me back to the main diagram and it'll, it will point it to you. Uh, there are ways that you can filter information in that train. So if you only want to see, uh, let's see, just your CDP information. Um, you can do that. So again, these uh so you can filter information, you can view information, uh, you can hide things uh, to try to make it uh, be a little more specific on, on what you're looking for. Uh, searches, I'm going to copy this IP address. So in that train, you can search for any data field. So it's just an S on the keyboard. Uh, you can search for this. I'll say this diagram only. Hit search. So if you're looking for a particular MAC address, IP address, uh, if you know something's up with uh, one of your devices, uh, you can even type in your device name, hit search, and then uh, it will pull up a search result uh, like this that you can show on diagram. Now, as mentioned, uh, other uses uh, besides those network maps, uh, if you right click, you can also embed documents. So they need like, I don't know, config files or operation manuals, escalation procedures. Uh, you can embed documents uh, in that terrain. So you're looking at a, a more of a logical network diagram. Uh, one of the items that really sets NetTrain apart is actually showing both logical and physical network infrastructure diagrams. So if you want to, for example, I'll do a copy connect to. If you actually want to see this discovered device inside a, say, a network rack, um, I can go in here, get a logical diagram. I'll just create a sandbox here. Do a site. Go on the site. If you want, you can. Insert a background image. I will just do like a office building. Well, that's big. And then if you want, you can, again, you don't have to do it this way. Some of our customers do this. You don't have to. And if you want, you can either bring in a picture of your office floor. Room. You actually go to the in the room and you can actually uh, place a grid and place racks on it. So you're looking at the top bird's eye view of a data center rack. So it's a 10,000 watts of power, 1,000 pounds of weight, and 42 space. So there's a Dell 42 front and back cabinet. Double click on it, and you can paste. So this will So you can see that this uh, diagram, this rack, can live off two different diagrams. Again, a logical network view 
as well as a, a rack view. So I told me that's a little different with that train. Again, you can use, create these logical network diagram views. So this is our SNP network discovery. So again, this uh, lives off two, two different diagrams, right? A logical view, as well as a physical view. And how do we get this? How do we get this network map laid out like this? And how do we actually do the discovery? So if you go under tools, utilities, collector, this will download our collector. It's a thick client. And I'll show that to you here. So this houses our, our REST API connectors as well as uh, SNP uh, discovery. Oh, yeah, let me figure that. So uh, many customers use our SNP discovery to go out and discover your network. But also, if you have other third-party management systems like Remedy, ServiceNow, uh, SolarWinds, PureTT, Nagios, uh, we have hooks into those using REST APIs. And we're also coming up with uh, a, a much more broader uh, scope for for hybrid infrastructure monitoring, you know, the cloud. So in our next uh, nine six release, uh, we're gonna be introducing a brand new AWS connector, Azure, as well as uh, GCP. So again, you can monitor and, and, and bring in really from anywhere uh, using our Rust APIs. So I'm gonna focus on SNMP. Uh, so you would need to hear, click on this configure button. Uh, so you would either, Enter an IP address, use it as a C discovery, um, or do an IP address range. Uh, make sure you click the versions of SNP, your, your community strings. And once you're done, you can hit advance. So these are the different tables uh, we go ahead and discover. Uh, we do both layer two and layer three discovery, as well as VLANs. Uh, so these are the different SNP tables that we go out and, and run a discovery and search for bridge tables, CDP, LDP, and round tables. And if you're doing C discovery, uh, you can check the different tables that you want to go out and discover. So for example, your core router, how far down the network do you want to crawl? So these are the different levels. So once that's done, uh, you would then, if you want, you can schedule this as well. You can schedule for X number of minutes, hours, week, the start day, start time, and you can automatically push the new data into that terrain. We also have a very basic polar, uh, by all means, uh, where not like a, your net brain or solvents, uh, you know, we don't do the bandwidth utilization, traffic flow analysis, root cause analysis. Uh, net trains, network discovery right now is show me what's on my network and how are things connected. Uh, we have a very basic uh, device pull-in. Uh, it does a timeout for ping in the SNMP. So if you don't have any network monitoring, maybe this would be a good step uh, to enable uh, device pull-in. And we also do uh, SNP traps as well. So again, that's under here, the polar settings. And once you're done, you can uh, hit scan. If you want to manually scan at one time, just hit scan. And it's gonna look something like this. So your 66 connections, 47 devices. So the names, IP address. So that's uh, that's it. Then that's that. You you automatically push this to net train, or you can manually push it. And when I mean a push, it's going to push to your net train server. So again, this could be your local server or your uh, cloud server, and you will produce these type of network maps. Uh, I know we have some time. Uh, there were some interests in regards to fiber plants and, and DCIM. Let me go through that really quick. Uh, 
Um, so with NetTrain, not only can you discover your network, produce network maps, uh, logical and physical, and you can also, if there are anyone out there that needs to document their fiber, the fiber plant, uh, outside plants, uh, you can do that here. Uh, we have different maps that, that uh, we support. Map source, so you can do like Google Satellite, Google Maps. Uh, or OpenStreetMaps. So uh, we there's the different maps that we support out of the box. So if you need document fiber, the manhole, so I'll, I'll double click on this manhole. Uh, so splice enclosure. And if you want to manage and track fiber strands, uh, you can do that in that train here. Basically toggle and do port to port connections here. But uh, I, I won't bore with the guys about this any further. If, if you want more information about our outside plant, you know, feel free to contact us. And then going back to the actual data center or actually an office building. So we've seen a lot of, lately, a lot of customers have been documenting their office floor, uh, their rooms, uh, connections to wall jacks. Uh, that's something you could do in that train as well. I'll go back to the third floor and I'll show you a, a specific data center room. So these are racks. Uh, you can uh, manage the capacity of your, of your data center room, uh, shows you a number of devices, and then ports that are connected, free. And these are the Color coded racks, green, yellow, orange, and red, depend on the on the fill rates. So you can see here if I toggle this between space availability, uh, power availability, and weight availability. So that's again, that's something you can do in that train as well. You can manage some of the not only just a network, you can also use that train used as a network asset inventory. So where all your network assets are and what rack and what data center room, telecom room. So again, it's really a full-fledged network asset inventory solution. It'll go ahead and discover your network. You can place them on physical uh, diagrams like this. So I'll stop now. I will see if there are any questions in chats. So am I discovering the cable information? Uh, yes, if it's uh, again through the layer two discovery, showing CDP and LDP connections, uh, we can definitely show uh, port to port type connections. Uh, alarm status, uh, I should show that to you. Um, hold on, I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna mimic a device that's going that's going down. I'm going to share my screen again. So we have a status here. Where is the status here? There's a status here that's uh, up or down offline. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta find it. Is there's a there's a field here for status? Uh, it's gonna say up, up or down. Uh, well, if it's offline, it will blink. Um, I can say that to you. I don't know where it is here. Like, see the offline or off. Um, there it is. So if status is down, again, this could be automated. Uh, you'll see it, it's going to blank. Uh, 
Uh, we do support LDP. Again, uh, go into our collector here, configure, advance. So it shows right here LDP and CDP tables that we bring in. Again, if you're doing C discovery, it will show you here LDP and CDP. Let's see, can we create work orders? Yes, you can, I'll show that next. And warranty information, yes, you can do that as well. All right, so let me uh, share my screen again. So warranty and create work, work orders, all right. So with any uh, object, you can uh, add data fields. Um, so here, go catalog fields. So I think I already have some here, maintenance expiration, warranty expiration. So if there are any data fields you want to add about a specific item, device, or connection, just hit add new, and you can add as many data fields as you like. So you're not restricted in adding data fields for any given object or connection. So we also have reports, uh, we call them tools, query. This is our report builder. So we actually have one here for maintenance report. They can run. And this will pull up a list of all your devices that are coming up for renewal, warrant expiration, uh, maintenance expiration. So that's how you can uh, keep track of expirations for, for network devices and assets. Uh, work orders, I'll just um, create, I'll just click on this connection here, for example, uh, right click and hit task. Uh, so we have these tasks where you can like, for example, this is insert link to, insert fiber cables, or I'll say uh, insert connection. You can assign it to your different owners. You can do add, delete, other. You specify a due date and submit. So that's our work order task. Solo wins. Yes, we do have a solo wins connector. So if you go under our nutrient collector, you'll see here solo ends. Uh, if you hit configure, you do your username, password, and your REST API endpoint. And it will bring in everything that's in the nodes table and connections table in solo ends and bring it in. Um, I should have a working demo for the solo ends uh, soon. But yeah, many of our customers use our solo ends connector. So probably our, our most Frequently used connector of all these listed here besides ServiceNow. Uh, so again, uh, we do support ServiceNow. Uh, let me see if any other questions. For a data center, can I monitor power? Yes, you can. Uh, we actually have a real-time power monitoring tool. Um, which if you like, I can grab it. Uh, maybe we only have one minute left, but uh, if uh, anyone that wants to stay on, I can go through our power monitoring as well as our uh, connect, see available fiber paths, fiber routes. Uh, if you, uh, yeah, so I'll answer those two other questions. But before I, I continue on for those, uh, let me go back to my PowerPoint slide deck. All right. So again, my name is Fred Co. I'm the director of sales for Graphical Networks. Uh, you can reach me directly at fred.co at graphicalnetworks.com. 
Um, if you like, you can also try it out for free. Um, if you want curious to see how NetTrain is going to look like in your environment, how the network discovery is going to run, I'll go here. I'll put this in the chat. So again, if you want to sign up, it's a 14-day trial. You just uh, put your organization, your name, your email address, password, hit submit, uh, check your email, your spam folder. It will say click here to activate your trial. And uh, again, make sure you go under tools, utilities, collector to download the collector. Again, tools, utilities, collector to download the uh, collector and try it out. And I'll go through, uh, so thank you so much for everyone for joining. I'm gonna uh, just, if you want to spare a couple of minutes, I'm gonna answer those last two questions. So we have a tool in that train for fiber plant. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to my University of Maryland campus environment here. So I'm gonna click on two buildings. So like, yeah, I wanna create a new, a new circuit and see if there are any available paths, either going through manholes, poles, uh, see what's available. So you want to circuits, you hit create a new circuit, and it shows that there is a path available through six hops. So okay, all right, I'll create this. I'll create the circuit name called uh, for a test one, maybe. It's a patch. Yep. Oh, here too, you can also create work orders tasks as well um, when you create a new circuit. So here there's asking me if you want to create a, a circle ad record, CLR type view for this new circuit I just created. Wow, uh, this is way uh, going beyond the network discovery. Uh, so again, this is more specific for one of you guys' uh, questions. So this is going to take a little while since uh, it's uh, this is the circuit for test one. So between Milk Kilden Library and this Brenner building, there are two, four, six different manholes. Uh, so the Kilden Library on first floor in the wiring closet, uh, rack A1, and this device named FP underscore XOS dot dot dot. Season ports B3, B4. It's using strands three and four through a 24 strand fiber. And it basically uh, just works its way itself all the way towards the end, where eventually it will end in a Brennan Herb building on the third floor. Uh, rack one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the device name DA, DB, card A, uh, ports B5, B6. So if you actually let me get back here. And you can also create a bill of materials type report uh, in that terrain. And the one last part I'm going to uh, go through, stop and share how to pull up my EM module, uh, environmental monitor module, which is our uh, real time power monitoring tool. So let me set up. To you. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for all your questions. I do appreciate it. Yeah, let me just go. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, if you had to forgive me, uh, I can't access our EM module. So if uh, those that are interested, you can contact me and I can schedule a 15-minute uh, uh, demo of our 
uh, EM module. So uh, again, um, my email address is, I'm gonna put this in the chat, my contact information. Uh, one last question from Alexis. Can you manage the application by global team or several local team? Yes, um, you would need to go to the admin council. Uh, you can create uh, different users and their profiles. And you can set them up as an admin, a power user, an editor, a read-only, uh, annotator, and no access. So I think that's eight different permission levels you can sign. And you can actually sign them on a per site per location, per diagram access as well. So if you want to say, for example, someone in the US can only see US information or particular uh, location, you can set those uh, type of security permissions. So like, for example, some customers have uh, multiple locations. Uh, they only want to see one specific group can only see their diagrams. Uh, so yes, yeah, so you can definitely um, restrict users that way. And we do support uh, Active Directory as well as Azure uh, Active Directory for a single sign-on. Yep. Yes, again, uh, we do support uh, Active Directory or, or Azure Active Directory. So uh, thank you everyone so much for your time. Uh, we want uh, seven minutes beyond our, our scheduled time. so. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your interest and time. Again, uh, this is uh, Fred Kelly Craft Networks, and I appreciate it.